with it. So um, I've got another ride in here. It's entirely different than what um, I've started off with. Uh, so I finished one of the packets. I think we started this one, but I'm gonna go ahead and start from the beginning. So um, what were the principal features of British rule in India, the postmodern societies of the Roman Empire is what to be considered in um, the root of, liter of the literate and uh, the grounds for the enlightenment movement. Um, Many texts from the time remain, that remained and were used to establish a literate class in the rural populations outside the urban trading ports during the onset of the pre-modern endemic. As humans gathered in denser groups, the population of India experiences the effect in which that the disease starts to spread amongst the mercantile class of the peasantry um, that begins to actually start to participate in the world economy. Um, this mercantile exchange um, takes off. So there's um, spices, there's um, penicillin, um, there's an abundance of ready-made fashion, and now all these ports have made it possible for them them to all exist in one culture. And that is like the, the transition into the modernity uh, so of uh, this e economic growth that spurns the traditional routes that were characterized in the replacement of the superpositions of the times here explain the that I, I treat the endemic as strains um, which begin to mutate over the centuries and the mutations continue to be ver um, various microbes that are considered by the historians less um, uh, vir virulent uh, forms of the disease. So this is all original writing by me um, and, um, and I'm actually having a hard time reading it. So I'm gonna keep going, um, bear with me. So these forms of the disease in order to continue to infect the pill population transmit the disease and uh, attack their host. This transmission of disease continues through the interactions with the mercantile population and this cultural exchange, um, these cultural exchanges that take place. Um, so the Black Death begins to take the lives of many of the population. They're nomadic um, and these are also once considered sedimentary members of the society that are um, now exposed to be the first wave of the then endemic. It shifts as the mutations and the forms of transmission adapt to the immune systems and the resistance of the merchants who contract the disease through the animal population. This waste proponent of the contaminant in the population's food and water supply in large part is due to man living in such close proximity to the infected um, carriers of the disease while living in harsh living conditions. During the establishment of the government housing projects by the English monarchical hand that is so strategically placed over the world economy through the establishment of loans of the disease develops developed in a global threat to counter the Roman Empire that quadruple in the to be um, the infectious infection rate and the dust that are wiping over 33% um, of the population at one time. So this enlightenment and um, the scholarly guilds that begin to revolt against the Church of England for political con control, the radicals, the part of the population that grows more sustainable, so, excuse me, susceptible to the pandemic, revolt against the redistribution of wealth and fight for um, their property rights against the monarchical hand that has destroyed the upper middle class of merchants that use spices, silks, um, silver for commerce in India um, ports and um, as they remove this dependence from on gold uh, as a form of currency and create a, an oppressed population in the countryside of serfdom of labor and uh, the financial control of the economy that they've established through the second cultural exchange. And um, this Church of England has begun to loan out um, and finance much of the world economy. So the um, collecting in the agricultural portions of the pe peasantry countryside are in debt. Um, they established apprenticeships, basically the system of serfdom of assembly for mercantile within the peasantry class that um, have established all um, port systems, routes to the Eurasia, um, southern India and China. Salvation would come from a progressive disengagement from these newly developed systems of governance. Um, and basically it's leading to their 
pivotal role in the world economy and they begin to re-examine their social, economic, and political changes. So during this time, their role in the world market experiences rapid economic growth and the movement of enlightenment begins to influence new forms of work due in large part to origins of modern science. So again, during this rebirth of society in the early 15th century, which marks the second renaissance, the pandemic has, has transcribed the course of business on the global market as this rapid economic growth gr continues is considered to be a shift of political structure and um, destructs the um, empire's middle class, leaving the majority of society in the early 15th century, which marks the second renaissance, the pandemic that has transcribed the course of business on the global market um, as this rapid economic growth continues, is considered to be a shift of political structure and deconstructs the empire's middle class. So this is leaving the majority of society to form a new peasantry class that continues to fall veil to disease and the new era of modernity begins. This shift prioritizes text from the scientific discovery of medicine to replace the superstitions of the time. So Christianity starts to make its references and influence the development of art, culture, leisurely practices that are used to um, by the newly literate class to explain the deaths and the world around them. So this um, trading of empires continues as they partic as their partition participation or the expansion of the port system in the West um, and their Eastern colonial front um, as the area of the world in the establishment of an all sea port system. So the Enlightenment artists begin to establish their importance by historians during the 1500s and in the history of the pandemic studies. So during this transference um, period and this gestation of the mutation strands that emerge from Ebola, the Black Death, the strand with which mutates to adapt to the immune systems of those not wiped out by the first wave of the disease. So this early strand of E. coli, as previously mentioned, um, the development of the disease begins to mobilize the strands um, that the uh, indigenous population's immune systems have built a resistance to within their hosts. However, these merchants continue to be infected by what is now the bubonic plague and uh, um, has infected and the world market of the world market continues its uh, system of commerce that includes great works of art, weaponry, pottery, and the three more, most important spices, silver and uh, sugar, as in the world um, the third wave of the transmission within the urbanized peasantry class of mercantile trade establishes the trading empires and um, so this establishes ca capitalistic importance of sectors within the governance system that is despondent and reorganizing itself it's um, it is in fact a reorganization of the economy this commercial evolution that occurs um so it is you know based off of the want to have a culturalization of each society. Um, this commercial revolution that occurs in the trading empires begins to result in the rapid transportation of commerce in the East Asia coast and establishes China as the world's superpower. The Mughal Empire makes it possible for the transportation of precious goods across long distances with the transportation of disease, which prevents the welcoming environment, which um, presents a welcoming environment for these diseases and a power vacuum in the Mediterranean. So there's a decline of city-states like Venice and Genoa. It undermines the strength of the Christian church and has a huge impact in business uh, belief systems across the country by embracing the ideas that death being um, inevitable, death was all around them and this loss of faith uh, is a concept that further is explained through art uh, throughout the th the um, thematic uh, Buddha Shakyamuni Muna, Muni, excuse me. Um, so uh, this is a from the Chola period, about 12th century. Nagapatinam, a southern port city on the coast of India, considered to be this day a mecca for specific sites of agricultural ruins, but a housing space for artifacts of the time, not accessible from any other city. So based on the religious scarcity um, 
that these relics contain as well as the explicity um, and dianity um, that the Mughal Empire attempts to preserve within the confines of the methods of business. These methods of business relations throughout China, England, Europe, France, and the world market. So the totalitarian states and a network of capitalistic economies are participating in the trading empires, experiencing a cultural exchange of religious importance. Um, for example, Buddha shows an interest in nature in an attempt to be opened up to the western port city of modern day Lebanon in order to take control of the strategi strategically pivotal, pivotal um, area port for travel on the Mediterranean against Portugal, Italy, and Spain. So this vision of a kingdom of man upon earth. Much of um, Bacon's imagery was borrowed from the geographical discoveries. He uh, aspired to be the Columbus of the new intellectual world, to sail through the pillars of Hercules, um, the symbol of the old knowledge into the Atlantic Ocean in search of new and more useful knowledge. So this modern age of science continues to establish. Um, the reformation of the Roman Empire was established in the trade of crafted works of art into the all seaside port system um, of mercantile trade during this period of rac rapid economic growth, which spurs the trading routes that were characterized in um, by the replacement of super positions of the time to explain and to treat the endemic as strands begin to mutate over centuries and the mutations continue as variations of microbes considered by historians less uh, vir vir virulent forms of the disease. So in order to continue to infect the population, transmit the, the disease and attack their host, transmissions of the disease continue through interactions with the mercantile population and this cultural exchange takes place. So the Black Death begins and it takes lives of many of the population, nomadic and once sedimentary members of the society that are now exposed to the first wave of the then pandemic. It shifts as mutations in the forms of transmission adapt to the immune systems um, and the resistance of the merchants who contract the disease through the animal population. This waste proponent of the contaminant in the population's food and water supply, once again, is in large part due to the living conditions rivaled by, as previously discussed, the fourth of the population during the Roman and Byzantine empires. As the world economy continues to establish trading relations on the land and overseas. So it was that people were getting sick trying to get maybe the the vaccines or the medicine um, to incorporate into their um, their society or their port um, or their uh, previous agricultural ruler, rural population. So the enlightened and the scholarly guilds begin to revolt against the Church of England for political control. Um, basically, the fear is that they're um, kind of like now is an exchange with the medication. We've talked about the, um, the mutations that happen and that does suggest that many were um, able to access uh, the medication, but like I mentioned before, um, sometimes people died en route to the next like port um, before they even got the medicine, before they acquired the, sir, like the, the goods and services that they wanted to um, sell and resell basically because they are liberals, um, so they don't necessarily believe in ex excess. Um, and they're also capitalists, which not only suggests that they're um, buying something, they're buying a large quantity, probably like what we would consider wholesale, to resale and spur um, an exchange. So this enlightenment, this the enlightened and the scholarly guilds begin to revolt against the Church of England and for political control and the radicals. Um, the part of the population that grows more susceptible to the pandemic at this point it has affected everyone. So um, the revolt against the redistribution of wealth and the fight for their property rights against the monarchical hand 
that has destroyed the upper middle class and created an oppressed population in the countryside of the surf system of labor and their financial control of the economy that they um, in the countryside of surf, um, surf systems of labor um, and their financial control of the economy that they have established through this second cultural exchange so that it, that does suggest kind of what i said they're in debt they don't have money england is letting them borrow the money so now they want to make more money generate capita that they are then able to repay the, the loan right so um this takes place um, as they have again established through the second cultural exchange the church of england has begun to loan and finance much of the world economy so that is a consensus collecting the agricultural portion of the peasantry countryside to establish an apprenticeship system of serfdom um, assembly of mercantile within the peasantry class the civil war within the master craftsmen's um, this would train the peasantry class in the specialized skills used to modernize the commodities that they use to establish their trading empires. These heavy machineries would um, maim and sever much of the peasantry population, basically uh, putting another like element to this capitalistic society that now is attaching price tags to parts of your body, whether it's like your arm, your hand, an eye. Um, it, it is also factored in, if that makes sense. Like, it's not just that um, they're employed um, as apprentice in this area and that they experience these, um, you know, like severe injuries to their bodies and the owner of the machine is just sort of like, oh, I'm, I, I'm saying sorry to you. It didn't work that way. So. Um, the, within the peasantry class and um, the civil war, th that's what's going on with the peasantry class that again is in debt and is, you know, not maybe that's not the best way to treat people, but um, they were in, in all areas of rural uh, air populations and sex in, considered in slaves. They were part of the estates. They were part of the land. They weren't able to do these things before. So, you know, we're, we're transitioning into modernity and it is like, well, I would hate to be in debt for the rest of my life because I'm blind or something after operating one of those machines, but it's better than being, you know, in debt to the land and never capable of making money um, because you were sold in an estate sale. So um, within this peasantry class, this is sort of taking place. There's a civil war within the master craftsmen who train the peasantry class in the specialized skills. So people are working with them to kind of like uh, make sure that this transition is fluid and um, does happen rapidly um, because wealth is being generated. So the civil war, again, within the master craftsmen would train the peasantry class in these specialized skills used to modernize the commodities that you, they used to establish their trading empires. These heavy machineries would maim them and sever much of the peasantry population, unable to interact with the new technologies. Their practice of artisanal goods continues in the creating of the perfect candlestick. Um, this establishes as a totalitarian system of governance that allows for positions within the nobility and removes a standing militia that has in large part been taken by the first wave of the endemic. As previously discussed, Geneva and Sicily claim stake at the Mediterranean, overpassing Madrid and Barcelona due in large part to the climate and the church's establishment of rule. The mining for silver in these areas turns to Italy into a superpower and the controlling force in the world market as the capitalist economic growth proceeds into the previously mentioned areas of Italy. Enlightenment uh, artists began to establish the importance by historians during the 1500s and in this history of the pandemic studies during this transference of transference period and the gestation of the mutant strands that emerges after Ebola. So the Black Death, strands within this mutation that adapt to the immune systems of those not wiped by the first wave of the disease, early strands of E. coli. Um, so uh, this is basically uh, 
that the first wave of the disease is an early strand of E. coli. Uh, as previously mentioned, the development, the transference of the disease continues and it begins to mobilize the strands, making it possible for uh, one host to get to the other port um, alive. So somehow just being around each other, I'm getting a, an immune like my immune system is building a tolerance. So even if I'm a little bit sick, it might not kill me, but by the time I get to the next port, other people around me are in a close knit um, area. I'm interacting with them. Uh, our immune systems are not equipped to be next to each other because those sex of the population weren't actually um, able to leave the estate because they were poor or they weren't able to get on a steamboat because they weren't merchants just yet or um, England hadn't financed the world market so this hadn't taken place so our immune systems were just not used to being with like around each other that um, would be enough even if my immune system could tolerate the disease while on board the steamboat or whatever a method of transportation I was using um, to then like, wipe me and the, that population out. Um, that strand that was then, I guess, considered a second or third strand would be enough to kill um, that new infected population. Their infected corpses would then generate another strand. Other people would then contract that strand they either have an immune system that can tolerate it or they too get wiped out. So it's it's sort of um, the other route of like transference that occurs within an endemic pandemic um, because we mentioned medication and you do understand that if you're not taking the medication, the disease itself is going to mutate. I'm talking about a natural occurring mutation that also took place and it took place because travel was just now happening and um, those people weren't able to um, to have that immune system set up for them beforehand. It wasn't possible. Um, so what is now the bubonic plague uh, has infected the world market and continued this system of commerce that includes great works of art, weaponry, and pottery. Um, the three most important spices, silver and sugar is in the world third wave of transmission. Um, so within this urbanization of the peasantry class um, of mercantile um, trade, establishing uh, the trading empires, which establishes capitalistic importance of sect sectors within the government governance system that is despondent and a reorganization of the economy by the Chicago boys. So this cultural exchange within China that um, establishes them as a world superpower centuries ago and remains so to this day. Um, as this holistic belief in the pursuit of illusion, illusionary pleasures and dubious ambitions, enlightened and ultimately salvation would come from a progressive disengagement from India. So leading to their pivotal role in the world economy and they begin to re-examine the social, economic and political changes. During this time, their role in the world market experiences a rapid economic growth and the movement of the enlightenment begins to influence new forms of work in large part due to the or origins of modern science. So even then people knew that that's how it happened. That I want to go to Spain. I want saffron in my dishes. I want that to be incorporated in my rice. Um, I want it to cook with. It remains to be one of the most expensive um, spices in all of the world. It only exists, like it's only native to Spain and Texas. It grows in Texas wild, but it's poisonous. So you can't use it really to cook. I would not recommend it. You could get very sick. You could die from it. In Spain, um, it being like exclu having it exclusively um, being native there um, created people um, who aren't extremists. They're just participating in the economy, just like everybody else. It's not that like it's not like fandom, like with anime or with like um, or like a, you know like a, like vinyl toys, the Funko toys, and stuff like that. Like 
Um, there are people who really get into that stuff and go to conventions. You wouldn't think of like a saffron convention. That doesn't happen. It's that there's an exchange. These cultures, these societies want to have like saffron. They want sugar. They want silver. I've never had those before. I've always just worked on um, a farm or in a rural area. Now I get to have a little bit of say in what my um, spending power is going to look like in the economy and I want it to have that. Once each society basically has all of the um, facets, there are, there's tends to be like an exchange that happens um, in the modernization of science and um, medicine. It's called the origins of modern science. So this foundation is placed basically in this conversation of endemics and pandemics because it's happening for the first time. People were not traveling, so it wasn't possible for it to be considered an endemic, which we know is to, to affect the large majority of people. And then um, the pandemic being a world issue. So um, that transition does take place. And um, the solution um, to the pandemics that have overtaken and wiped out many seaside ports and this ag agricultural um, area so like I, I mentioned if you are from China you go to Spain for this saffron um, and you get to that port you may have the disease or they may have the disease and that whole port get wiped out so it was likely to happen and it's likely to happen that you guys never even met each other or saw each other and that the entire um, boat that was intended to travel and purchase things dies like everybody dies so um that is the foundation for the origins of modern science along with what we mentioned um the practice of finishing uh, a portion of medicine until you recover which is ironically enough or i guess not ironically and not ironic at all is still the basis for how we practice medicine today so um if you're not not like a biology major or something like that that's fine you kind of got like schooled during the pandemic whether it was firsthand or like through the news or maybe like you read a little like webmd or something like whatever your version of that pandemic's um firsthand account from you is um it still remains to have these elements of what the reality and the foundation for modern science is which is that you naturally have an immune system it naturally interacts with other people there are people who were not around in your rural area they were from a diff different rural area and exposed to contaminants that built and constructed their immune system differently you guys interact something um one facet of your immune system or the other doesn't like or merge or um like uh, mutate in the right way it mutates in a bad way and starts to compromise your immune system and gets you really sick gets maybe the per other person sick too and you both could die maybe one of you recovers just depends on what's readily available if the medicine available and accessible works because their immune system has a tolerance um, and they recover that's awesome the likelihood that they've been exposed to you and that medicine exists and they're from that area is that they're gonna die and you're gonna live because you're being introduced to their immune system you're getting the version of the medicine that works in that area in context to that immune system that antibody exists and your body now for the first time mutates your immune system and um you maybe have a cough and you recover or whatever the um the uh version of your sickness looks like me i'm not vaccinated um i think we're going into the fourth year of the pandemic this march i have been working i've been outside i've been very social i've been around um the mall on countless occasions i don't wear a mask um, I know that these aren't like the most common practices. For me, it gets my immune system. Now that we've gone through um, maybe two years of wearing masks all of the time to be like really strong. I haven't felt even slightly sick, not even once. And that's from me understanding that there is somebody who's sick. It could be a mutated strand. Um, I'm though in the same city as them. I stay in the same city for the most part. And um, in doing so, um, the 
strands of like mutations are what are conditioning and um, strengthening my immune system rather than um, the vaccine itself, which has the antibodies that are universally accepted. Um, so there's a vaccine, it works across the board. Even in context of what's going on, there are um, medical providers that create different variations. I believe there's three of them. And that is in context to what area, if you'd like to go and look into it, there are websites who can give you that information. So that you understand like if I'm in America, which is the best version for me? Like if I'm in China, which one's gonna be likely to be um, the antibody that's gonna work for me? Um, if I'm in Australia, if I'm in what was, uh, Taiwan. Taiwan went maybe 400 days without a single case of COVID-19. Um, so that being true for them, their antibody is going to be something very aggressive because no one got sick. It was 400 days. Everyone stayed inside. Nobody, nobody got sick. One of the cleanest um, countries uh, to to date in context with this um, conversation of pandemics, which is awesome for them. But um, now I'd be interested to know which which vaccine they're using, right? So, cause it's probably gonna be the most up-to-date and aggressive antibody or vaccine that would treat probably the most aggressive mutated strand. Now that these exchanges have happened, people have been allowed to come into Taiwan or leave and come back um, and, uh, you know, built a different tolerance to immune, uh, immune systems, the disease itself, how those exchanges take place once you're now a host, a transmitter, that conversation of immune systems happens and whoever the host that exits or exits and returns affecting that population or the one that leaves affecting um you know maybe someone in africa maybe someone in paris really hard because they didn't have a tolerance built up for 400 days their immune system got knocked like hit really hard um and they had like a vaccine early on so their immune system works I mean, they're not dead, right? So now they've got like uh, 900 days later, they're, you know, current 20, they're celebrating New Year's Eve. They come across somebody who's Taiwanese, who's leaving Taiwan for the first time or Paris for the first time. Um, I'm sorry, Taiwan for the first time and experiencing New Year's Eve in uh, Paris for the first time, experiencing those mutation, mutated strands in, um, in response to what they're experiencing being more aggressive, the other people probably at that um, at that party are going to feel sick. They may not have exact symptoms that they had when they first um, went to the hospital or to get in, like uh, the vaccine, but now they're going to feel maybe like what you would feel after smoking a pack of cigarettes or something like that. So if I haven't smoked cigarettes in like five years and I picked some up, my throat is gonna kill me. It's gonna start to feel really coarse and like scratchy. Um, I may not have the same tolerance um, to fight it off with my immune system because I've now contracted a different strand. The vaccine didn't work because now I'm sick, right? So you may have to go to the doctor and get a different vaccine. I'd be again, curious to know which one it is, right? Because that one would be the, um, the one that I would think would be the only one you need. How doctors aren't having that conversation, I'm not sure. Um, there might be other factors that I don't know about that would create like a tolerance um, in your immune system or like mutate the strand um, to the disease in a different way um, or respond to the antibody for some reason in a way that just uh, doesn't treat the disease. So now this, um, this pathogen is just living and mutating and festering in your body. You're now it's host and it could be ter uh, terminal. So to uh, basically establish that uh, these Western Europe, Eurasian and 
our colonial neighbors with the use of modern science are being um, able for the first time now to explain the reality of the world um, around them living and dead. So um, that is relevant because you're dealing with um, the disease, right? You're not just blindly seeing people die because um, X, Y, and Z, you're seeing them die because of the pandemic, the endemic at this time, or, you know, later, um, I think it d has already gotten to the point where it's like the third or fourth wave, the pandemic. So um, what is now uh, living and dead, which remains evident in works found from the 15th to 16th century, for a moment I thought remain evident in their rural area because what I'm getting at is that, uh, Sometimes, if they're poor, they're a member of the serfdom, they're dying on the, the farmland or the estate because we're transitioning and it still hasn't happened for them yet. Um, they may be one of the dead corpses that don't get buried because it costs money to do that, right? So um, in history, it's, it's been factored to be like um, expensive to do it can be modern day context applied 500 to 5,000 we've got like four plots in to our name at our household um two are um like around the airport and then two are sort of out in um clear lake so you know though that's not that's not something a precursor for most living and participating in a uh, surf dis system. So um, this transition is fast happening, but not, um, it's not, it's, it's not a, uh, it's that it happens and for the great majority, it happened really fast to a lot of the population, but I couldn't guarantee that, um, that it was, um, that it was a actual transition for everyone. It's not that like, um, everyone was guaranteed the position of society that was sort of suggested to be a, not a universal healthcare standard, but a universal um, standard of living. Like the, it's not like a wage of living, or what is this? Uh, the cost of living didn't change for each person because they're being financed. The cost of living doesn't change, but the amount of debt that they have factored in to the cost of living does because some people, you know, their family gets sent to China or I'm sorry, from China to um, Spain and that person dies and doesn't bring anything back. The money's gone. So like it is factored in in different ways. And um, it is that there's this really positive movement taking place and we want it to be um, a catch all for everybody, everybody, for everyone, but it doesn't necessarily apply to everyone. So during this rebirth of society in the early 15th century, um, which marks the second renaissance, this pandemic that has transcribed the course of business, D do you see why now? Um, because there is this exchange, um, which you we, we've talked about, you want all of the societies to be modernized and have these goods and services, but now there's like elements of debt, even after um, there's like, tons of money being pumped into the economy and there's also um, a gold standard that everybody is um, factoring in. So um, this renaissance um, with the pandemic that has transcribed the course of business on the global market as this rapid economy, economic growth continues is considered to be a shift of political structure and it just deconstructs the empire's middle class, leaving the majority of the society to form a new peasantry class. So it is to form a new peasantry class that continues to fall a veil to disease. And um, this new era of modernity begins. The shift prioritizes text from the scientific discovery of medicine to replace the superstitions of the time. Christians make references that influence the development of art excuses. So Christian references and influences in the development of art rather culture and leisure practices that are used by the newly literate class to explain the deaths and the world around them so this trading empires empire continues their participation with the expansion of the port system in the west and the eastern col col 
colonial front. So as this area of the world and the establishment of an all seaport system transitions into the age of modernity, you see this upheaval, right? Um, the the uh, disease uh, does start to be trans Admitted. Um, so there's exchanges that happen, but um, it is eventually so that everybody is capitalistic, which is generating wealth and collecting capita, creating capita. Um, it is also considered that there wouldn't be like enslavements or serfdoms. Um, the areas that were rural estates are now expanding. They're, they've gotten machinery and introduction of technology. Uh, transportation is made uh, accessible. Um, we're doing so, and it's um, that we're transporting things, goods and services, or people on, uh, in these trade routes quickly and rapidly as we stimulate the, the, the world economy. So. This also provided for the artists to depict exotic costumes, architecture, and luxury goods, the hallmarks of the Enlightenment movement style. So the, um, I think I mentioned that yesterday uh, or in the previous videos on um, this distribution of this feudal government system, governance system of the radicals, formerly rich landowners, part of the aristocratic upper middle class, leading to another revolution due in large part to the changes of the economic philosophies. And there, that is what I was trying to get at, these economic philosophies. Okay, so it's, it's like a, a positive change, right? So uh, these other revolutions are in due part uh, due in large part to the changes of the economic philosophies and the redistribution of wealth results in the revolution from the old order and the toppling of the monarchical order and a new system of governance which um, is far much more efficient in a feudal system of governance as they take arms against the monar monarchical hand over the control of the agricultural countryside. In large part, the revolution, while the introduction of heavy machinery is used to accelerate production in the agricultural system. So these next new technologies, that's another thing is, um, it's supposed to accelerate the uh, production. So um, that would be a positive in a capitalistic, eco capitalistic economy. So new technologies, of the Industrial Revolution replaced much of the radicals and peasantry class of the French countryside. The capitalistic system of, econ of economy and its philosophies that take place in England and partially in France, Russia does not experience an overthrow, an overthrow of the government of political shifts for nearly two centuries, in which the government had no inter had to intervene in order to speed the system as the capitalistic transformations that take place in Europe and Germany, while there is no evidence of real industrialization in their states um, that drastically differ from the two paths that um, their societies ensue. These two totalitarian states prove that it does not transform these societies equally despite the evolution of the Enlightenment and the educational reformation that's also um, after the rebirth of the uh, world market, right? So uh, that's in large part from the invention of paper. That's like one of the first things that happens to um, be considered in society to have wealth and also a technology. So this technology leads to the printing press. The printing press helps. Um, spread theology, but also um, establish that this um, new concept of the education system is concrete and the foundation for it lives on today. So um, whether you're wondering what the um, level of success is considered in history, it's a success because most people use paper uh, to create books and they read the books and they've been educated and um, it, it's a practice that's continuously incorporated into society today. So that is a success in um, a move towards modernity. So the upheaval took place, the replacement of language uh, or storytelling 
is done now through papers, printing, printers, printing, and the distribution of books. So there are pamphlets also, but basically um, you understand that um, it, it alongside with um, these uh, origins of modern sciences don't really deviate from this time period forward. Um, so the Civil War, Civil War creates a very different governance system as the development of the bourgeoisie and the business class of French take, takes arms against the free market system that is taking control of the Western European territories and interior Asia. So this commercial revolution that occurs in these trading empires beginning um, to result in rapid transportation of commerce in the East Asian coast and establishes um, in China as a world superpower um, as or establishes rather that China is a superpower as uh, merchants continue to be looked down upon from the aristocratic land-owning elites from Southeast Asia. So this harvesting of strands of rice, these hybrid agricultural agriculture that spurred enough food basically to feed, feed thousands of people and create this potential for a stronger economy or a stronger market to rival Europe for control of the free market. Textiles are competing for metal and are um, easily employed across the oceanic system of trade. This long distance trade with Japan and India and eastern um, the eastern coast of Africa as the commercial power of China suggests that the industrialization of goods and services proves to be the most efficient method of globalization. That's, I guess, the terminology I'm looking for. An efficient method of globalization. Those are examples. Um, so this establishment of rapid economic growth is now um, what we call the world market. So the feudal obligations of the French countryside lived as the subject of the dynasty and they begin to overthrow the dynastic rule to preserve the traditional societies and the fundamental changes of capitalism and the right to, to private property guarantees as a member of society, and this is very important, that their property will not be taken away without providing an expl explanatory mechanism for occasions when those interpretations differ from what an individual's prior beliefs and political learnings would otherwise predict. So firstly, through the mean um, period of rule, many uh, agricultural feats, which were to be developed during the brutalist style of modern architecture commonly used as a trademark stylistic feature of the time, devastating the church's bureaucracy. So um, an example of that in Houston would be the uh, St. Jude's uh, hospital. It's exclusively for kids, but it's done in that style. I think just one side of the building um, has windows, the other side doesn't. So if you're ever driving downtown, you might get an opportunity to see it if you're coming in from the south. Uh, the, tr um, the devastating, uh, excuse me, so for the time, it's devastating the church's bureaucracy, the threat of these pandemics. Once endemics, the disease that had um, at this point in time rapidly developed into a mutated strand of multiple pandemics. And that's kind of what we talked about with this exchange that takes place from immune host to immune, I'm sorry, yeah, um, immune host uh, or um, pathogens host rather, um, to pathogens host, but also somebody who's immune or sort of um, not like contracted the disease just yet could also be the one and more most likely to contract the multiple pandemics mutant strand, a mutated strand. I hope, I really hope that makes sense because there's not someone on the other side um, confirming that for me. But anyways, it's wiping basically out much of the population. So this function of disease in the ancient world was seen by the Chinese to devastate those empires and were the major con concentrations which were to spread from China to the Roman world. Transportation through the Mediterranean as these two totalitarian systems, excuse me, totalitarian states continue to establish trade. 
these de depictions were not only commissioned in areas that followed but rivaled the English church. So, um, the, uh, oh, excuse me, the English church, Western invasions begin um, in numbers and areas that followed but ruled, r riv rivaled the English church. Um, sorry, I just read that. Um, incorrectly so it's these depictions were not only commissioned in areas that followed but rivaled the english church western invasion begins um or began in numbers and uh areas that followed but rival oh, i'm sorry wow i keep doing it Re represented no immediate threat so um no immediate threat uh to and the threat would be to the greatest imperial system on the face of the world, China, and remained the largest economic economy in the world um, well into the 18th century. So Europeans were having this increased impact on China's history and its impact on the global ec economic platform, as previously mentioned, was a tributary um, system that often no more than a th was considered to be more than no more than a thin cover for trade in the for foreign merchants, um, especially the Muslim traders who were ambiguous uh, among the Central Asian caravan routes that the Southern sea lanes often posed as envoys in order to engage in the trade. Uh, most Chinese traditional, traditional um, considered that this practice was an abuse of Roman uh, cultural practices all the same because it is that um, stretching the imagination too far to see through a rough correspondence between the me mechanical universe of the 17th century philosophers and the bourgeoisie's desire for this rap rational predictable orders um, or order so um, this Mughal Empire take, makes it possible for the transportation of precious goods across long distances with the transportation of disease, which presents a welcoming environment for these diseases um, because, uh, you know, we're, we're new to each other's transmitted mutated strand, if that makes sense. So like that host is a, a new vessel it's welcoming in that regard um and uh it becomes um a vac a power vacuum in the mediterranean there's a decline in city states like venice and genoa undermining the strength of the christian church or the Christ christian church and had a huge impact in the belief systems across the country by embracing the idea that death um, being uh, inevitable, death was um, all around everyone around them. Um, the, so it is that I'm not alive during this time period, so I'm going to say them. Uh, the loss of faith takes place, um, and this is capitalized the loss of faith. If you want to look into it, it is like a rabbit hole there of information for you. This concept is further explained in art as well. So through this the thematic um, Buddha shock Yamani Muni Muni uh, so um, from this solar period about 12th century Maga Patanam a southern port city in the coast of India considered to be this day a Mecca for uh, specific sites of agricultural ruins but a housing space for artifacts of the time um, not accessible from any other city based on the religious scarcity that these relics contained um, as well as these um, liberal and uh, explicitly in dignity that the Mughal empires attempt to preserve within the confines of the methods of business um, so that is like capitalism in a really liberal regard and these methods of business relations um, throughout China, England, Europe, France, and the world market um, so these two totalitarian states, um, the network of capitalist society that are participating in these trading empires experience the cultural exchange uh, <coughs> of religious importance. For an example, um, again with Buddha Shah, an, an interest in uh, nature and an attempt to 
be opened up to the western port city of modern day Lebanon in order to take control of the strategic of the strategically pivotal of travel on the Mediterranean um, against Portugal, Italy, Spain, and the vision of this uh, kingdom of man upon earth. So much of Bacon's imagery was borrowed from the geographical discoveries. Once again, um, as previously mentioned, he aspired to be the Columbus of new intellectual worlds, um, to sail through the pillars of Hercules, the symbol of old knowledge into the Atlantic Ocean. Um, in search of new and more useful knowledge. So this modern age of science continues to establish. However, the pre-modern societies failed to detect the coincidence of the scientific revolution with the commercial prosperity and the rise of the middle class. So um, even though they thought people were gonna contract the disease by interacting with each other, I don't think that they understood just yet that it was gonna affect everybody and um, go back and affect everyone to be considered uh, 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 a mutated strand and that the middle class is basically kind of like each wave of the pandemic having to restructure itself again. So um, this masculinity of the empire, this rapid economic growth, the exquisite pottery and this invention of the printing that allowed for mass production of the mythological books as well um, and established uh, the uh, basically literal literate rural class outside the rural maritime port cities um, and tried to stop it when they detected it. So um, they were commissioned through this time to be um, used as devices that were iconic during the time of the pandemic while the lives of the entire population were infected with the Black Death. Merchants from the urban port maintained the importance of these are artisan depictions of theatrics through the carved materials, which were reflected in the history of the Mughals of China, whose st statues of Buddha Shekayamuni, I'm gonna get it right at some point, I'll just keep working it in here, um, seated in the meditation Dayamana Mirandaria from the Shola period, um, about 12th century, so Maga Pasanaman, Ten Mill, Nadu, India, carved from granite. The third monumental Buddha comes from the coastal town of Magapatanam in southern India. Um, we're seen as these. Uh, we're seen as a rare, flourishing site for Buddhism in the 12th century. So globalization of economic and integration equating to capitalistic systems of governments governance in which money transference develops the economic system once again very important to note money is now the transference that develops the economic system of governance to integrate in international financial systems of distribution amongst the commerce and mercantile members of the global playing field never though um before so however to integrate uh ec economics and technology transferences all over the world instantaneous uh communication through the modern modernization of society causes distributions di excuse me dis Eruptions. So despite being positive or negative, um, while the cultural exchange frantically is p uh, paced with the globalization that occurred in such rapid speed for the first major era of these communications and exchanges because um, it caused the onset of the endemics and this um, rapid development of the pandemics as they emerge on the world stage through commerce. So first in Portugal, the Portuguese are the first to initiate on the capitalistic and economic exchange and to the Americas and other parts of the world. So gunpowder may indeed have been a factor, although it is unlikely that its um, importance lay in blowing its feudal walls of China, enjoying such um, international pace, uh, peace, excuse me, that is aircratically, um, considered lineage that did not um, engage in castle building or architectural uh, style rather than in a brutalist 
building of sort typical in Europe. Thus, China did not have any feudal fortifications to blow up the wall of China designed to keep steep nomadics um, from invading China. So, however, the um, However, the exchange of this monopolized gunpowder powder creates the um, value necessary for the commodity to um, purse cultural and mercantile exchange in parts of the world um, never previously exposed to the disease. So this onset of this um, bubonic plague and the transmission of the disease from, race and, from rats and fleas that um, traveled along with the merchants from the upper middle class that began to interact with the weak immune systems of the nomadic and sedimentary populations and mutated strands of the disease which developed um, in the nomadic enemies to the north. Um, soon, the Song di dyna dynasty ultimately falls to the um, Mughals, most formally because they're forced to emerge from Eurasia empires and reside within these hosts as the immune systems of the surviving population. That's another way to say it. Um, these are the surviving populations. So, I mean, you just, you know, you kind of keep getting a cough because you're getting richer and richer for like two centuries or your, your little sect is. I mean, I guess it's, it's not that you're, um, it's not the worst case scenario because you could um, create a deficit for your community. You don't want to do that because then disease isn't going to be your biggest concern. So uh, the surviving population continues with their commerce practices in Eurasia and their political um, neighbors of the eastern coast of Africa and into your Western Europe. So through the carriers that previously died before reaching the seaport of commerce, which we uh, have already said is vital to remember because that took place so many times. It would be the way that um, sometimes this capitalistic um, transition, this age of modernity was kind of stunted or um, maybe slowed down. So the emphasis on uh, religion in this spread of Christianity created a war within the within Mexico as the concept of manifest destiny in large part continues to be combated by the spread of disease. So uh, another way to talk about that, if I own like five houses next to the airport um, and I fall into debt, um, the government's not gonna give me $2 million for the houses. Um, if I am in debt $2 million and the context is that that's um, what manifest destiny is considered to be. Um, they basically will um, acquire the property and sometimes they don't pay. You. It's, I mean, there's variations of that that take place. That's why China is kind of echoing that the, the Great Wall of China being a barrier. So um, in its defense, uh, comparably so, that that took place. Sometimes people would attack and take your property, your land, and your wealth, your services, your goods, your, um, your saffron, um, and they didn't pay you for it. They just acquired your wealth. Um, however, a variation of that that took place. Now, we're, um, we have transitioned to be a capitalistic economy. So in Texas, for example, if I own like a Use, I'll use that example again. If I own like five houses and I'm in debt, they're not going to necessarily take the properties. But if the airport wants to expand, they aren't going to give me $2 million for the houses, which is maybe what I think they're worth. What if I keep them um, in my family for 40 years will spur and generate because I'm not living in all five houses, so I'm able to lease them out. Other people can generate wealth um, in my bank account as capita because they're having to abide by the lease um, and pay me rent, So, which um, means that if the government were to pay me a standard rate for all of the houses. It may not be as beneficial to me to do, um, but I could not argue. Like it would not be up to me, but it would be something that 
um, is legal in a capitalistic economy. That's not the exact example that would take place if you're in debt because your um, family went to um, maybe like uh, Paris to get gunpowder, to get ready-made fashion or textiles or garments. Um, and weren't able to come back because they contracted um, the pathogen and are now very ill or dead. So um, that is being brought up and when it's brought up, you kind of want to pay attention because it happens and it's not always explained. If I um, went back to read the book, I could tell you that it wasn't explained because I always am very thorough about making a point to um, get that verified within the text. If it's not mentioned um, and you do want to, I would encourage you to look it up and see what um, variation of that it is that they're describing to be um, in regards to what's um, Mexico at the time. So, um, and this, I mean, this takes place and is used as an example in like centuries with different societies. So you could kind of see what that means. I know that the basic premise and foundation of what it means is that, but it could vary. So that would be something interesting. Um, regardless, uh, the large commercial um, empire's expansion from the American, for, from the American territories, creates um, an established economic educational reform to trans transform the e economy, so to divide the social structure of the consumer paradise in the world's visions for a capitalistic, um, world economy and what that means consumer paradise was again that i have sat from now i basically have gone to paris and acquired some garments and some some um maybe like gunpowder i've gone to now whatever port java and gotten some you know uh, other goods from them as well so that i am now able to be a vendor or mer merchant and create capita for me and my family. Um, so that would be what would be a consumer paradise, um, that exchange happening rather than a deficit. Um, so this idea of good versus evil, the illusion is um, a theme within the anti-globalization movement that takes power in the late 80s. Um, many have not participated in the free market economy. However, the NAFTA political excuse me, leaders see that this is um, a major threat and this will result in losing major political affluence. So this takes place in Bolivia, Venezuela, Chile, um, Chile. During their exchange, the scare is of a third wave of the pandemic disease that um, are being controlled as uh, corporate investments and that create a system of educational reforms within an, an uh, within an initiative to feed the poor and establish social security for the most vulnerable and susceptible populations of the world. So I'm going to stop there because I'm past an hour and then uh, we'll pick up where I basically left off, uh, left off, excuse me.